that we forgot. Right here is a picture of my mother and I when I was five years old at SeaWorld. The reason I show this around the world, and right now I'm on a 20 country speaking tour, is because when you're five years old, you forget three things once you get to be our age and sit in a room and think you know something. You forget how to be risky. You forget how to be naive. And most importantly, you do what other people tell you. So what happens? This is what happens. I've been sitting here for an hour. Look around the room, people checking their email, checking their phone. They're stuck in this. You're stuck in the matrix. You're stuck being myopic. Think you're doing the right things for the right reasons. Most of the time you're not. Why does that matter? Because this is the reality. Everything that gentleman just got up here and talked about, this is what he is fundamentally doing. And I applaud him for that. Because it's not about playing the same game. You think you're building a company? You're not. You're either revolutionizing an industry and making what the industry is, is now irrelevant, or you're not. You're either playing by the old game and the old rules, or you're not. What the gentleman who just got up on this stage is doing is doing something that I also do around the world, in many systems just like him. So it's not about futuristic stuff. What he got up here and talked about, what I'm about to talk to you about, is about how to make sure that every single human being in this world has an equal opportunity to create, to build what they're passionate about, to make sure that it's more equal around the world. Because last time I checked, the world's never been more unequal ever in the history of this world. My background, I was fortunate to scale a company to four continents in two years. Since 1850, in the past 164 years, less than a thousand people have ever done that. So for you analytic folks, that means 100,000th of 1% is the odds of doing that. Also, I was fortunate enough to build and scale a program with Michael Dell called the Center for Entrepreneurs. We gave Series E, Series B, Series C backed startups funding. We scaled that from a million in revenue to a quarter billion in three years, which is unheard of in a public company. Here's why most of you are here today. You have goals and dreams and you have resources. You're trying to figure out that red space in the middle, and that's really, really hard to figure out. Okay? Why is that? Why is it so hard to understand getting to that middle and being strategic, more importantly, about getting to that middle? Here's why. Because you're unprincipled. Every single entrepreneur, investor, and CEO I've ever met, besides the greatest leaders in the world, are unprincipled in what they do. Why? Well... They don't have goals. They base everything they do around time and money. Any system that's built as the core organizing principle being time or money fails. It's just a matter of time. Just a matter of time. Most of the time when I give presentations around the world, we spend 10 minutes just on this slide. Talking about your top five goals personally and your top five goals professionally. I don't have that kind of time today and neither do you unfortunately. What I will tell you is the best thing you can do to accelerate whatever your vision is for the world is to write down what you want to be known for when you die. Because the biggest regret we have in life is we never get to do what we want to do. We do what other people tell us. We inherit dreams from other people. And instead, we don't do what we want to do. There's always an excuse to make. That's why you're obsessed with your laptop and your Blackberry right now. And you know why that matters so much? Because I think that Mr. Hemingway was right. Because when you're unprincipled, when you don't have a higher vision for what your life's purpose is, and know where you're going in the long term, meaning 50, 60, 70 years down the road, you fail. And you fail because money and time is not something that's scalable. You are not scalable. What is scalable is your passion, your purpose, your perseverance, and having people believe in that. And having people help you to build your company, your product. The best and the greatest leaders in the world have community management strategies. You know why? Because the community becomes the product and the product becomes the community. Because the community becomes the sales team and the sales team becomes the community. The community eventually starts to outstrip the ops, the biz dev, you can go down the line of all the different parts of a business. Most businesses are restructured the opposite way, which is the business insources everything. It centralizes everything. What the gentleman got up here just before me and talked about was about 
decentralizing everything, flattening everything, lowering the barrier to entry. We're going to go through what that looks like in a graph. So why is it that most people are on principle? Well, it's pretty simple. You get stuck in the weeds. It's really easy to get stuck in the weeds these days. There's more things to do in literal time. That's why I love Bill Gates' quote. It's easy to be successful once. It's not easy to build eight companies in eight different industries and have three exits. Right? And when you do that, and when you scale a company to four continents in two years, you start to see patterns. The first thing you do, is a mistake that most people do, is stay in the weeds. But that's why you have to understand what power actually is. Because we think power is force. We think power is controlling people. Power has nothing to do with that. This is what power has to do with. Generating an effective action. Right? Money is not an effective action. Money is a byproduct. Having enough time to do something, that's not an effective action either. That's a byproduct of being principled. A lot of us think we're kingpins. That's how we got in this room. Guess what? Kingpins fall. Why do they fall? Because you believe you're untouchable. We're hardwired from 100,000 years ago, right? In 100,000 years ago, a hunter-gatherer society. The last time we had an update was this funky gray thing in between our forehead here called the neocortex. It forces us to think that we're untouchable so that we think that we're safe. The challenge is, when we think we're safe, it creates heuristics. It doesn't allow us to think outside the box, as people like to say. It doesn't allow us to think risky, as people like to say. Because at the end of the day, what your mind is forcing you to do biologically is compartmentalize things. And that's how the greats always fall. Because what happens is they build too much structure. That's called innovator's dilemma, folks. So what happens in innovator's dilemma? Well, I like the way in which all of our systems have been built is that everything can be perfect all the time and that you can dictate. But that's not how the world works. What humanity wants right now is a little bit of gray area. No system can ever be perfect. Number two, the reason we're here in this room talking about investment, about entrepreneurship is two quick things. What I find really interesting is very few people understand the strategy revolution. We think we know something about business. All of you think you know something about business. I tell you, I don't know anything. I tell VCs don't know anything. I tell you, ancient investors don't know anything either. You say, here, well, how can that be true? There's all these books like The Lean Startup, and there's guys like Craig Christensen, and yada, yada, yada. Yeah, that's true. But guess what? Business has only had any significant statistical rigor since the 1950s. We're such experts that business, we've only known what we're doing for the past 60 years. Last time I checked, 60 years is not a very long time to understand what you're doing. On top of that, you know what else is compounding? How to build a business in the right way at the right time for the right principled reasons? 1980s, shareholder revolution. Milton Friedman in the late 70s said the only reason to build a business, return on investment, shareholders. So we've only had 30 years of understanding the dynamics of every human wants to do what they want to do the way they want to do it, and businesses trying to centralize and operationalize in a way that only benefits them. Doesn't work. <laughs> Systems are not marathons, but successive sprints. Microsoft is great at, at releasing products and building teams based on marathons. Here's the problem with marathons, this linear trajectory where you think you can plan everything out. Brain doesn't work that way. The way the brain works is successive sprints. You do things for a day, a week, maybe a month, and then you have to take time off. It takes time for the brain to re-hardwire itself. It's the same thing with your culture, your employees, your products, and your customers. Linear extrapolations. Economists, they're really good at this. Where things are now, what you do, you just take that thing and multiply it by this much, and oh, we're just going to get this fancy little hockey stick curve. The world doesn't work this way either. The world works like a linear extrapolation until it doesn't. And with technology at the core, it absolutely doesn't work that way anymore. Yet we think it does. Portfolio management theory for VCs, this is how it works. Linear extrapolation, statistics, that's how it works. That's not how it's going to work going forward. It can. Useful technology, but it can't be accessed at scale. The gentleman who just got up here before me, this is what he's talking about. How do you tech technology and re-architect an entire supply chain so that every single human being to access it. He got up here and gave a whole bunch of examples. And although there was a ton, it was very clear where he was trying to go. He was saying, look, at the end of the day, content is not accessible. 
and it's not monetizable, and it's an unfair system. You know who wins? The elites, the fiefdoms. And unfortunately, because of technology, those folks can't win anymore, and they don't like it too much. Fortunately for most of the rest of the world, that's why things are getting re-architected. Because what happens is, all of our systems when we built them, the folks who built them didn't have the foresight to realize where it was going to go. And so what happens is, when you apply technology to an inefficient operation, it magnifies that inefficiency. That's why most startups fail, because they're inefficient from the beginning, because they don't have core organizing principles. And if you don't have core organizing principles, you don't have the right mission and values. You don't have the right mission and values, you don't have the right culture. You don't have the right culture, you don't hire the right people. You don't hire the right people, you got the wrong product. You got the wrong product, you got the wrong customer. You got the wrong customer, you can't raise money. And then you die. 432 million entrepreneurs attempt to start 305 million businesses a year. Of those 305 million businesses, only 100 million of them actually launch. Of those 100 million, only one in a thousand are ever sustainable. And of those sustainable ones, only one in a thousand raise money. So if you want to be sustainable and raise money, your odds are one in a million. You might as well play the lotto. I want to talk about an unsustainable system. Last but not least, economics right now. Economics drives just about everything. Problem is right now, it's in the hands of too, too few. Well, what's the problem with that? Well, there's not equal opportunity access. We see that with inequality all around the world. Well, it's not gonna stay that way. What do you gotta remember? Money can't be the core organizing principle. That's why we are where we are. Because all the folks who decided to make our systems back 100 years ago decided money is what matters in the world. So that's not how humanity works. Money works up here, money doesn't work here. This is what's scalable, this isn't. This is what drives humanity. This doesn't. It's passion and creation are skill. Because if people believe in you and whatever your vision is, they help. It's really that simple. It's tribalism, folks. Why you do what you do? What's your passion? What's your purpose? What's your cause? What's your belief? Simon Sinek talks about it all the time. And if you don't believe me, let's take a use case real quick. And then i got to get out of here because we're running out of time. Let's talk about the customer market. Let's make it a little bit more tangible. Huh? Autonomy and choice. Every customer that you're trying to target wants a local solution. Tell it however they want it. They want it when they want it, why they want it, how they want it, and where they want it. Those are all things that our systems aren't used to, particularly why. Particularly around storytelling. Before it was just an exchange. That's it. Remember back in the 1980s when you had to go to a mall? And if you were lucky enough to be near the mall, what's the other problem that you had? Well, you could only get certain things, and the mall dictated to you what you could buy. If you didn't like it, oh well. Then what happened? Well, the internet happened. And what happened when the internet came? All of a sudden, you have decentralization of choice. Understanding humans is not a new phenomenon. It's a new phenomenon, folks. 50 years. That's how long we've been studying the human brain. And we know less than 1% about the human brain. Right? So what's funny about that? Well, how do you build a company? How do you build a product? Who buys your product? People. So, if we've only known how to rigorously metricize a company for less than 60 years, we've only known about the human brain for 60 years, I'd argue we don't know too much about actually what we're doing, and technology is the best exacerbator and accelerant to understanding what we can do, how we should be working as a humanity and as a society. Well, what's the other thing? Confusion. What technology has done, the reason why people are getting like this right now, I do a presentation called Don't Catch Up Falling Knives. Because right now all our systems are a bunch of knives, they're a bunch of daggers. They're being held up. Because right? the fiefdoms don't want them to drop. They want to stay in power. Here's the problem. The harder you keep them, the more you keep them up there, the deeper you're going to get cut. We don't know how to behave with technology at the core of our world. Because we've never actually dealt with anything besides time and money being the core organizing principle. Except that's not where the world's going. And it can't. So last but not least, why does it matter? Well, everybody's here in the room because of technology. Technology is very powerful, extremely powerful. What's the problem? There's a short-term mismatch. It's your job to understand in this room right now what that mismatch actually means, mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Because at the end of the day, you're the one who's building the companies, building the teams, building the product, building the culture, and ultimately the one who has to engage the customer. And if you can understand the dichotomy between how your brain thinks, what technology is trying to exacerbate, but where our systems are today, you have a chance better than one in a million. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Gary.